Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Aso, this is Aso Tarot, and in today's pick a card reading, we are doing a special one, and this is, this is for the homies. This is, I'm excited. We are going to be doing an energy check and basically just a love check in for divine counterparts. Now, if you feel you are part of a divine counterpart connection, but you do not know that person, it is absolutely okay to still watch this. Um, it is still relevant. A lot of what we are talking about is still relevant. And just because you haven't met them yet doesn't mean the connection isn't already working with you. The kind of point of divine counterpart connections is that it is more than just, you know, an earthly relationship. You can have an earthly relationship with them. And that is a beautiful aspect of it. But there are deeper energetic things happening at the same time that are working with you and them, whether you're, you both are consciously aware of it or not, whether you both have met one another or not, the connection itself is almost like a third vessel that is working with both of you. So for all of you that are drawn to this reading, that feel in your heart that you have one, I can't confirm that for you, only you can. Welcome, this is for you, and this is for all of you guys who have been requesting a video like this, um, specifically for spiritual counterparts, spiritual connections. So let's talk about what we're going to do today. So we're going to start by looking at the current energies overall. You are going to be on the left. That is my intention. Um, and we are going to see what your current energies are and how you're showing up. We are also on the right going to look at your counterparts energies and see how they're showing up in the connection, whether separately or together. And then we are going to look at the ethereal and material current energies of your connection. So the ethereal is going to represent light integration that is happening or is you're currently in the process of experiencing and receiving and the material is more how that's showing up in your world how you both are seeing that and just how that's manifesting in in the material world so after we look at that and it resonates for you uh, we are going to do tarot based on the tarot deck that you pick and we're going to look at a couple of questions mainly what do you need to know most at this time in general we're going to look at how your counterpart is currently experiencing the connection um, beyond just what their current energies are we're going to look at it also at a good way to connect with your counterpart in the connection and i will be giving interpretations for every kind so even if you haven't met your counterpart yet this is an excellent example of how you can still connect with them even though um, you may be at a distance or something like that then we are going to finish off by looking at how the connecting energy is working with you both and see just what it's trying to show you and then we're just going to finish off with some cute little guidance cards with crystals and chakras and just see what what they want you to know but if you are really interested in deep diving we are going to have an extended so in the extended, the theme is you in your person's world. And we're going to be looking at a couple of different questions. We're going to start by looking at what do they fantasize about when it comes to you and them. And I should mention, if you haven't met this person yet, then the extended will be more future oriented. So like after they've met you. Um, but for those of you that already know who your counterpart is, should work just fine. Um, but and then we're going to see who are you in their fantasies? How do they perceive you? How do they see you? You know, do you show up as a warrior princess or a bear or you know, like, how do, how do you show up? How do they see you? Then we're going to look at what do they know slash believe when it comes to your connection, especially like the spiritual parts of it. Um, how do they process it? What do they think? Then we're going to look at, I'm really excited for this question. Have they had any weird or supernatural experiences because of the connection? And if so, what are they? So I'm excited to see if like any, if they've had any interesting encounters or just weird things and see what comes through then we're going to look at how often do they think about you and we're going to try to get a percentage um I, I it is going to be very unscientific but i am going to do i'm very good at fake percentages actually so i think actually i'm going to do quite well at this and i'm excited to see how that comes through and then we're going to see what do they actually think about you so we're going to use channel messages for that so overall, I think we've got a lot here, very juicy reading. And if you've never checked out one of my extendeds, you should, cause they're really fun. We have a great time over there. Thank you to everyone who takes the time to hype them up. Um, that is one of the reasons why I don't take sponsors as often. I try not to, actually I've never taken a sponsor. It's not out of, 
it's not out of the realm of possibility for the future, but um, I try not to. I try to stay as independent as possible. So thank you to everyone who supports me and, and helps make that possible. So with that being said, we have three different groups for you to choose from today. And I thought it might be nice to kind of see what the cards look like on the other side. Let me know if that's something you prefer. But starting with group number one, we are going to be using the White Sage Tarot. And I have this dragon carving tektite on top. Couldn't tell you what kind of tektite. It's the kind that you carve dragons into. For group number two, we are going to be using the mini version of the Sleepwalkers Tarot, and I have this Lapis Lazuli heart on top. And then finally, for group number three, we are going to be using the mini version of Brit's Third Eye Tarot, and I have this aura-coated quartz stone that's teal and yellow. So that being said, go ahead and pause the video if you need to decide which pile you feel most drawn to. Um, it's okay to be drawn to more than one. It's possible there could be multiple messages for you or it could be as well. Um, you may need to jump around to find the right group. You know, if the you side is not resonating and doesn't sound like you, that's probably not your reading. Um, but my intro squad, comment a seahorse or an angel. Your, your choice to let me know you're still here and that you're ready to make a wish. I love you guys so much. Oh, my God. I feel like we're in like a secret club that like only those who stick around for the intro have. And I don't know. I can't wait for us to have a club handshake, whatever that is. Um, <laughs> maybe someone should come up with it. But it's time to make a wish. And I thought what better candle to make a wish on than my lover's candle. So if you don't know, all my tarot candles come with a mini tarot card inside. So after we make a wish together, um, I will interpret whatever card is in here as our mini message. So here she is in all of her glory. And I was like, where's the card? Like, I'm about to look like a, a liar. The card flipped out face down, which I kind of like. So let me remove the little rainbow charm. Um, She's kind of waxy, but it's fine. It's fine. She's got glitter. She's pretty. Okay. So if you would like to take a second and just focus your intentions, focus your energy, focus on what you want to create or what you want to wish for, feel free. If you want to pause the video to supercharge it, go ahead. May yours, mine, and all of our wishes come true. Thank you for wishing with me. Okay, let's see what your card is because it flipped over face down. Ah, we have the Page of Cups. Just mind you, I don't take reversals with these many cards. Someone brought that up once and I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not making it that complicated. This is beautiful. So I definitely feel like, first of all, the next few months are going to be a lot lighter and a lot more playful. Um, if you already know your counterpart and are talking to them or in a relationship with them, something like that, if you've been, if you've had an argument or anything like that recently, um, I do think that there will be reconciliation and forgiveness there, um, like an apology specifically, but this could be completely unrelated to counterparts and things like that. If you've had a falling out with someone or, you know, if someone did something that wasn't really very fair to you, I do think you could be receiving an apology from them. Um, I also see this as being something related to children for some of you. Um, I actually pulled this card when my sister-in-law was pregnant with my niece. And so I always take it as it's a girl card. Um, so maybe for some of you, if you're wondering or you feel that, you feel that way, I could be completely wrong though. I'm not a doctor. This is not a scientific uh, testing modality, but um, there could be a young girl that's coming through to say hi or send send love like for some of you I feel like this is like a spirit baby um, that might just be wanting to tell you hi and that they love you um, but I also think that there's going to be more playful times in the near future and you're being encouraged to focus on keeping things like keeping things fun and not making up excuses to deny your inner child anymore I feel like your inner child really needs and maybe for some of you that that's the spirit coming through is your inner child saying like I really need more fun I really need us to like play more like I know we live in an economy and have to pay taxes but like 
can we just spend like 30 minutes doing something fun? I, I really think they need that. Um, but also, you know, if you've met someone special recently that you feel like could be your counterpart or um, if you and your counterpart are just at a random spot, I, I can't tell you what, because that could be a bunch of different ones. You could be hearing from them soon. You could be getting an invitation soon or a flirty message. Um, any of those are a possibility. So that is your mini message. And that is all I have for the intro. Shout out to my intro squad. I love you guys. All right, now is the time for the real video. Well, not that this wasn't real. This was just as real. Actually, the realest of real are the ones that stick around for this. Um, <laughs> the ones that complain should utilize timestamps. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get into your reading. Thank you so much for being here. I am so excited to read for you and I'll see you in your reading. Hi there, Pile One. Welcome to your reading and thank you so much for being here. If you guys chose the Tektite Dragon Carving and the White Sage Tarot, this is going to be your reading on a check-in for you and your divine counterpart. If you'd like a full breakdown of the reading, there is one in the intro. If you're watching this and you don't know why, hold tight. You'll probably understand <laughs> later. So we're going to start by looking at your energy and how you are showing up in the connection you are on this end. On, on the left, anyway, <laughs> yeah, left and right is not my strong suit. Uh, you are showing up as the playful penguin, whimsy, community, loyalty, sanguine spirit of the snow, teach me the value of family and friends, and we have repel with reflection, so these are your energies and how you're showing up. We have the material and ethereal energies of the connection. So the material energies of the connection right now are envy and hold tight. But if you feel shame as soon as you saw that, stop it. There's no shame here. We'll talk about it. And the ethereal energies are divine blueprint, source, self, embodiment, inspiration. You are ready. And your counterpart's energies, whether you know them or not, we have Tranquil Turtle, Endurance, Commitment, Serenity, Spirit of Great Mother, Mother Goddess, Strengthen My Connection to the Earth, and we have Disruption with Shake Up. Okay, so I'm getting two different scenarios here. Um, one of them, you haven't met this person yet, but you were definitely brought to this reading because the connection is already working through you and actually your person is going through a lot of similar things. And if you do know who your person is, I would definitely say that you guys are not in the place that you guys would like to be or you're not in the best place. Um, if your counterpart has been non-committal or, or there have been challenges between the two of you, I wouldn't be shocked if there is maybe a lack of communication, a lack of connection, or just a lack of interaction with one another at the time, um, like at this time. Because when I look at your energy, it seems like what you were once drawn to you now are recognizing that it may have been an unhealthy attachment. Like for example, one way in which I'm seeing this energy play out like in your experience is maybe you've had a hard time being present in you know, the nice experiences that you've had with friends and family, or you've had a hard time just embracing your reality because you've had the desire for, you know, a special loving relationship. And so you seem to see that everywhere and you wonder like, why isn't that happening for me? Or when is it gonna be my turn? And I feel like that deep heartfelt desire is number one, like there for a reason and not something you're going to miss out on. But I feel like the process of creating this um, for you is creating an energy where you're less attached to why it isn't here yet or why you don't have it. Um, for those of you that are that know who your person is, hang tight because your interpretation's coming. Um, but I feel like for those of you that chose pile one, you've definitely been in a position where I feel like you've pivoted. And I love how these cards are so similar. Like the, the orange here really matches the orange of the wings. Um, if you know your counterpart and you've had some struggles with them, um, it definitely seems like you could be almost repelled by them or, or like, which, which can happen. Like there's like, 
three states of being, neutrality, magnetism, and repulsion. So, and, and I, repulsion is a really strong word. It could just be you're not attracted to them at this time. Like it could be that their behavior might turn you off if they're particularly immature. Um, or it could just be that your focus on your love life or love in general just isn't there the way it used to be. Um, and that could be something that I think is actually very helpful. It seems like just upon reflection, maybe you've recognized where you had blessings already in your reality that you weren't embracing. I feel like you've been focusing on the people that do uplift your life. Like I do want to commend you like this is really healthy energy. And because there's um, differing stories, um, different energies here, the way in which you're being repelled seems to be in ways that are helping you grow. And if they are related to your counterpart, it seems like you've evolved to a point where certain behaviors are not going, you're not going to resonate with that. You're not going to play into that dynamic because it just doesn't, it just doesn't um, resonate for you. Like for example, if you really chase this person's like attention or um, you kind of ignored your own boundaries to please this person, like it seems like you're not doing that anymore. And I feel like for a lot of you, it could just very well be that if you don't know this person yet, it seems like you're in a position where a lot of what you used to be comfortable with, a lot of what felt right for you no longer is. It seems like you're growing and changing in a lot of ways and it seems like you haven't been focused on love and like even if you are in a divine counterpart connection, it seems like you haven't been focused on that either. In fact, you might get quite annoyed or frustrated when your counterpart's energy, you know, comes into your field because you might be like, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to deal with this person. And I can definitely see one of the interesting things here is that if you and your counterpart know each other, you guys are projecting your worst fears onto one another. And they're not worst fears in the sense of like something bad happening to either of you. It's both of your ego's worst fears. So like you might be like, oh yeah, well my person doesn't care about me and project this idea that your person doesn't care about you, doesn't think about you, anything like that. Whereas your person might might project onto you like, oh, pile pile one, like they've, they've got it so good. Like they don't need someone like me. Like I feel like there could definitely be a little bit of um, lack mentality here and a little bit of low self-esteem on both ends. But I feel like in your case, pile one, like you're doing a lot to really focus on what you feel drawn to, on what feels good. And it seems like the connection itself hasn't felt good or focusing on love in general hasn't felt good. And so you've been focusing on love from other sources, focusing on who you know who you should share your loyalty with who you should spend your time with and i feel like that's a really healthy great place to be and i feel like there you're not doing anything wrong there's nothing out of place and i feel like even with your person let's talk about them i definitely <laughs> the the image that i got of a turtle was the turtle from finding nemo the like the very like surfer bra like you know it just rides the waves and just like chills out and stuff um your person could have that vibe but maybe they are just more a relaxed person or someone who has trouble grounding i do feel like your person is in an energy where they are no longer able to maintain their status quo and i feel like your person also has a desire for things that they didn't realize that they wanted um if you and your person know each other and this person rejected you or this person was non-committal i do feel like the loss of your time energy and attention is something that has been quite upsetting to them whether they want to admit it or not um the fact that we have disruption here shake up i definitely think that they were on a trajectory that um was taking them further away from the connection further away from themselves and I think that your decision to pull back actually really helped them put things into perspective. You know how like, if you have, if you always get to bowl with the kitty things up, you're never gonna focus on bowling that well because like, you know, if it hits the sides, it's not gonna go into the gutters, right? It's almost like you you were the, the barriers that were kind of keeping the ball out of the gutters. And <laughs> um, I'll, I'll explain why I laughed in a second. And it's like by kind of removing your energy in a way where you're a lot more focused on yourself and this is healthy, this is good. Um, it's like you're 
person doesn't have the same level of security around oh I, I can I can take my time I don't have to I don't I don't have to focus on bowling really well like no matter what like the barriers are gonna be there and the barriers are gone and so now your person is experiencing a lot of shakeups that they they had an experience because now they're having to hold more weight energetically in the connection I was laughing because I was thinking about a recent it's always sunny episode where Dennis <laughs> Every time Dee goes out to bowl, Dennis goes gutter ball. And uh, yeah, I just, I had that visualization and it made me laugh. And yeah. <laughs> um, but I do think that this person could have like an inner Dennis in the sense, your counterpart could have a really hard time trusting themselves. Um, but if you haven't met your counterpart yet, then I think that the energy and the way that they're showing up is that the universe is kind of shaking things up for them in a way where they're needing to, to alter course. And I think that that is the case whether you, you know them or not. Um, but I feel like in the case of the both of you, this divine blueprint is all about getting the both of you in alignment with, with your authentic selves, with your true power and your true nature, because that's a part of the purpose of the connection. And I feel like both of you, whether it's focused on each other or just focused on life in general, you might be feeling like pangs of jealousy or pangs of frustration being like, when is it my time? When am I going to have this experience? And you might even be feeling schadenfreude when people that you admired or look up to struggle or have a heart, have hardships. And you shouldn't shame yourself for that. Like, yeah, it's maybe not the healthiest, but like it, it says something about us. And I don't think there's a, it's a human thing. Like it's not healthy to do something all the time. But I think the cool thing about an emotion like jealousy is that it shows us what parts of us have unseen and untapped potential. So when you look at someone and you want part of what they have or you want that experience, there is a part of you that is saying, hey, we want to be in that position. Hey, we want to be seen that way. Or hey, we want to show up in that way. We want to do that thing. And I think that those experiences that you're having, whether they are related to like seeing other people in relationships and feeling frustrated, you know, telling yourself, well, okay, like, I guess I should, you know, shift my focus. Who, who do I see myself as and like in a partnership? And, you know, am I only accepting people showing up in ways that are good for me? Like there's a really, this is like, this is really dense in the sense that you might be feeling really crappy and really frustrated. I, I feel like honestly, you're probably feeling better than your person. It seems like you've worked through a lot and it seems like you're, whether you know them or not, you're at a place of, I feel like acceptance and also a place of embracing and valuing what is in your present. But I do feel like there is a part of you that wonders like, is the universe denying me? Like, did I do something wrong? Or And, and like the answer is a big fat no. Like you're not wrong in thinking that these things are for you. It's It's that the universe is like, literally reorienting you to get you in the position to be able to hold these more loving energies and your person as well so i feel like your person is in a position where a lot is happening to kind of get them out of this like this just go with the flow like whatever man like i'm just i'm just doing me and and kind of take life a little bit more seriously and realize like you know you can't just coast on the current forever like and have everything that you want I feel like even if they, they try to stick to that path, it gets more and more uncomfortable. And you might find that as well. Like maybe if you were like really attached to the connection or, or like watching a lot of readings or something, maybe you found that it was not good for you, not healthy for you. And and that's one thing I will say, like never force yourself to like watch things. Or if you, if you feel like your relationship with something is unhealthy, like please feel free to do something about it. And if you're consuming a lot of content but you don't feel it's unhealthy if it's helping you then there's nothing wrong with it but anyway with the divine blueprint card i feel like the light that's integrating in the connection is both of you are really having to shed and clean out clean out belief systems clean out identities um and and just aspects of the mind that no that that can't fit the world that you both are stepping into. And I think the really interesting thing is that your person was headed in a direction that was away from you and away from the connection. And I feel like the universe kind of stopped that in its tracks because they need to ascend. Like if they kept moving in that direction, they, they wouldn't get where they needed to go anyway. Um, and for you, I feel like the universe is leading you in a direction of, of more selfhood, more, um, more empowerment. And also like giving you 
well, right now what I feel is flowing through me, like there's a lot here around you growing into the person you want to be, you're well on your way. And like the universe wants you to know like you don't have to take that so seriously, like continue to do the things that bring you joy. But also for those of you that know one another, um, if you think like the other is just hunky dory and that like everything's fine and they're not thinking about you or whatever, which we'll look at that in the extended, but um, I, don't, I don't think that's true. I feel like both of you are looking at one another as like, oh, you know, they don't need me or oh, this doesn't matter. And, and it does. I feel like both of you feel like bouts of insecurity about the other. Like, what if I'm not good enough? And, and I also think that there is a level here and where if you don't know this person, that that energy still remains of like I don't feel good enough like what if what if I can't find that person like what if I have to settle and you don't have to like and you can refuse to um I feel like your heart knows when something is right and your heart knows when it's ready to release something truly um and so I feel like your heart is in this process both of your hearts are in this process of purification where you know, you both are integrating different lessons. I think for you, the lessons are around sovereignty and about how much are we willing to face our fears in order to, to become who we want and in order to love more deeply, share ourselves with the world and, and be unapologetic about what we want. And for your person, I feel like love is really asking them, you know, how willing are you to let go of your ideas about how you think you need to be? How willing are you to honor your value because I feel like this person has values that they don't always act on um and I'm sure you do too we I think we all do that um but I feel like your person the way that their heart is con like this feels like conditioning like <laughs> like you're you're doing two days on the football field like for your person I feel like the conditioning is and well and you both are shedding a lot of conditioning that's for sure and the most uncomfortable aspects of of the current energies are really just um flags arrows to what is looking to be transmuted what is looking to be loved what is looking to be seen by you acknowledged by you accepted by you intervened by you and for your person i feel like there is a lot here about getting serious and actually you know opening themselves up enough to accept the risk of sharing life with others, of being around others. And I feel like there is um, an energy here of responsibility, of discipline, of growth, and of committing to the things that actually matter to them. And I feel like maybe one of the things that they that didn't matter to them was this, a sense of self, a, a sense of deeper purpose and I feel like they're starting to recognize they need that I feel like one of the big disruptions for them is a realization that they're not where they want to be and that they're not currently the person or the version of themselves they would like to be They're they're not headed in that direction and I feel like for you there's just like there's a refinement of where you already see yourself going and also an additional shedding of, of belief systems that I feel like you realized are, are just aren't you anymore. Um, but I feel like what's really awesome here is that you both are, are gearing up for a lot of evolution on personal levels um, of maturation. And I feel like both of you are really stepping into a level of sovereignty neither of you have experienced before and also stepping into more personal responsibility um, and courage to do things differently, step outside the box and be a version of yourself that maybe you're afraid of, um, maybe you were afraid of expressing or maybe you've only recently uncovered exists, but now you know you need to embrace. So this is the cool thing about divine counterpart connections is that like there's so much going on on an individual level and like it's it's so much more than just like, oh, like love, like yes, it's love, it's it's all love. It's, it's all love helping us grow and evolve, but um, I just think what's really cool is that like so much can be happening beneath the surface and so many similarities can be happening without y'all even realizing it. But we're going to go ahead and get into the tarot now and start asking those important questions. Um, but if you're interested and you really want to go into your person's uh, world, in the extended, we're going to be looking at things like... Um, what are your person's fantasies when it comes to you and them? And who are you in those fantasies? We're going to be looking at, uh, what else are we looking at? Oh, we're also looking at, like, what do they know slash believe when it comes to your connection? Like, how aware of the spiritual parts are they? 
Oh, well, I'm so excited for this question. We're going to look at if they've ever experienced any weird supernatural phenomena related to your connection. We're also going to be looking at how often they think about you, like per, like in getting a percentage even, hopefully. And uh, we'll also pull some channel messages to see what specifically they think about you. So if you're interested in that, that'll be linked down below. But if not, I'm just grateful you're here. I just have to hype up my extenders because they're very good and I work very hard on them. And I appreciate everyone who comes to visit me over there. But if you want to support me in free ways, uh, liking the video, commenting down below, subscribing. Those are all really helpful ways. So thank you to everyone who does that. Oh, I'm letting the ads play. But yeah, okay. Anyway, let's get into your tarot now. So we're going to start by looking at what you need to know most about the connection, about everything. So Spirit, with everything we just talked about, what does Pile 1 need to know most? Okay, I feel like for some of you, you may have been sitting here like, I knew it. Like... I thought so. Like, I feel like I've already affirmed some of your intuitive hits. Um, but I feel like you need to trust your intuition even more. The fact that we have the high priestess here, you are not wrong in feeling that there's a lot more going on that underneath the surface than you realize. And I feel like there is a part of you, like you logically, that has had a really hard time dealing with the intuitive insights of this connection because, you know, the logical mind says oh, well, we don't need to worry about that. Or, oh, like, they don't even care about us. Or, oh, like, you know, what does that matter? Like, you know, if, if you don't know this person, you know, it could be a line of thinking of, oh, like, you know, maybe soulmates don't exist. Or, you know, maybe that person isn't out there for me. Or maybe I should just settle. Or, you know, what if I'm running out of time? And, and I feel like there is this deep, deep, tranquil peace within you that may be hard to tap into all the time but just knows the truth of your heart and whatever is meant to happen and I feel like there's a part of you that knows like my counterpart is out there or my counterpart and I are just needing to grow and whatever is meant to happen I know is okay I know I have a role in that and I also know that even though everything isn't where I would like to be I know everything's okay like what you need to know most is that everything's more than okay actually like and I just felt this really hot like sensation around my midsection so like my sacral and solar plexus especially like I feel like there is a lot of of evolution that you're experiencing around your relationships around boundaries around confidence a sense of self your self-esteem and I feel like your person is experiencing those things as well but I feel like it has more to do with responsibility for them and for you I feel like it's more about courage and I feel like in your case, one of the hardest things is to have the courage to trust in what feels true for you, even if you have no evidence. So what you need to know most is that you're not wrong in trusting your intuitive body and, and that your intuition is far more spot on than you realize. And also that it's okay to keep things a secret. It's okay not to tell everyone everything. And, you know, especially, you know, some secrets are best kept your, your own until they're safe enough to be out in the world. So, you know, be be cautious about who you share things with. Because um, when it comes to counterpart connections, a lot of people that don't have them, you know, they're just not going to get it. It's like, it's like any experience that is just life altering and, and very intense. You know, those of us that have never been in labor can't understand what it's like until we've been through it ourselves and even then it's experienced wildly differently by so many different people you know nobody knows what it's like to lose a loved one until that they love deeply and go through that grieving process and be and be in that grieving process until they do you know it's kind of one of those things where they're in humanity we have all these secret clubs and unfortunately the only way to be in it is through experience and sometimes they can be beautiful but a lot of times they're hard and I feel like divine counterparts are no exception and in your case, I feel like you just really need to trust that, um, trust what your heart and your intuition is telling you, maybe even writing it down in a place where it's safe. Um, but also if you need to seek out like, like-minded people or people in that, in, in a space that's more spiritual or more ethereal, like that might be helpful as well. But I feel like what you need to know is, is that you're not wrong and everything's okay. So now I want to see how your counterpart is currently experiencing the connection. So how is Pile One's counterpart currently experiencing the connection, please? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so 
two interpretations here. For those of you ha who haven't met your counterpart yet, your counterpart is going through a severe level of mental anguish. Well, that's for both of you, um, for both interpretations. But it, for your counterpart, it's a lot about they need to shift gears in life in general, and they don't know how they're going to do that. They don't know what they're going to do. There is a lot of worry and a lot of fear and also just a lot of uncertainty around what this means for them. Like, who are they? You know, there's a complete deconstruction of the ego and, and of the self. And I, and I would say that that's for both of you. I guess, I guess um, both interpretations, like that message is for both of you. It's just related to different things. I feel like for those of you that know this person, this connection is more integral in this disruption, in this shift. Um, whereas for those of you that haven't met this person yet, it has a lot to do with what isn't working in their life. And I feel like the connection is really showing them what is blocking them from being more of their authentic self. This nine of swords, they're definitely not having a great time mentally. Um, ain't that just a mood? But I definitely think that this is also like kind of the energy of, you know, this 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 energy gives me like, you knew the project was due for three weeks but you ask your mom the night before it's due to like go take you to the store so that you can get stuff <laughs> like i feel like all of us have done that at some point and it's like the panic sets in and you're like oh shit and, and then you've got to deal with like you know whatever consequences come as a result of having your mom help shout out to mom shout out to parents they're great um but it kind of feels like the energetic equivalent of that like they're kind of realizing, oh, I've got to get serious. Oh, I've got to do things. And it's really testing them. It's really making them wonder if they're equipped. Um, and I also think that uh, they're they're really, whatever aspects of self they, they were able to avoid in the past by having this kind of carefree attitude, I feel like it was masking a lot of fear that they were just really good at being able to detach from and I feel like part of this shakeup is now that they're unable to do that like they they have to face things in a way that they could have ignored them before like things are getting a lot louder than they used to and I think that these energies are being experienced like I feel like if your person knows you I wouldn't be shocked if they like stalk your social media a lot if you have it or you know ask around about you or things like that or or like make assumptions like oh, they probably don't need me or like they can find someone better anyway. Like there's definitely just a lot of like negative self-talk here and just a lot of fear. Like it's definitely exacerbating their worst fears. And, you know, I think that love and fear are, you know, opposites of one another. And I think that it's usually through fear that you find love, that you, that you ground love, that you find a force more powerful than that fear. And so I definitely think that is the process that they're going through right now. They may be having very similar relationship fears if you haven't met them yet. If you have met them, I do think that they are having fears around whether things can change, whether they're good enough for that, whether things will be okay. Like there's just definitely a lot of stress and frustration and fear. Fear is the main thing. Okay. So what is a good way to connect with your counterpart and the connection at this time? I definitely like this question for this group because I'll explain in a second, but what is a good way for pile one to connect with their counterpart and the connection in constructive ways? We have the world. Okay, so I really like this. I really feel like the best way to connect with them right now if you already know them, you will know whether you have a desire to communicate with them or not. And if you don't, that's completely okay. It definitely seems like you're going through a bigger cycle and like new seeds are being planted. So one way that you can connect with the connection and your person is by planting seeds for the future. So that could be a process of manifestation. That could be a process of having a bucket list or goals or things that you want to experience with them. It could also be a process of, okay, if we're going to reconvene, how do I want our interactions to be? How do I want to show up? How can I make sure that I'm living in alignment with my authenticity, with my integrity? Um, if you haven't met this person yet, I definitely think that by connecting to your future plans, what excites you, the ways in which you're growing, 
that is a way to connect with the connection. I really love that it came right out on top of this divine blueprint because I feel like all of you here are planting seeds for your future selves for a new iteration of the connection to come forward. Even if you haven't met this person yet in this lifetime, like it's still new for the both of you, right? Um, I feel like no matter what, no matter who you are and what your situation is, you can connect to your person and these energies by embracing the new. Whatever is new, you know, new ways of being, new ways of communicating, new attitudes, um, new ways of creating, new ways of looking at things. And I also think, you know, maybe physical travel could be something if some of you are considering moving um, or having a change of pace, that could be something. But I also think like, a lot of the connection right now is connection through self and connection through creation and like planting those seeds that are going to be very fruitful in the future. I also think that by staying fixed on what's true in your heart and not letting the confusion of the human reality get in the way, I feel like that helps you stay connected to the truth of what is in your heart. But just know those seeds have already been planted and like I feel like if you have an idea for connection, um, if you haven't met them yet, that works for you, do that. Um, if you already have a system of con of connecting with your person that works for you, don't stop doing that. Continue to do that. That seems to be very useful. Um, it seems like for a lot of you that know this person, it might be that communication is kind of shaky or it might be that you guys are just kind of taking time and working things out. So um, do what feels right for you. Take things at the pace that feels good for you. Um, but let's see now. Okay, I can already see that this wants to come out and this fits. So how is the connecting energy working with you both? It's helping you move beyond apathy, boredom, frustration, uh, stagnancy, and just a lack of movement in life. This is helping you both move towards your divine destinies. This, this energy is helping you both get aligned, get balanced, and actually be engaged in life in a way that maybe you haven't in a long time or a hot minute getting you excited to wake up, getting you excited to do work, getting you excited to change the way that you've been doing things. Like the purpose of the connection right now is to break you free from what is keeping you stuck, break free from what is keeping you numb, what is keeping you uninterested, what's keeping you apathetic, both of you, and helping you both move towards a heart-centered way of living and existing that is more balanced so that both of you can create lives that are in resonance with you, that, that make you feel joyful, that make you feel good. And whatever is meant to unfold in the connection as a result, you know, that's up to both of your creation. But I feel like, you know, when you both are in better positions of confidence and, and trust in yourselves and trust in, in the connection and, and trust in, you know, your your own creative powers and your ability to be a creator being like i feel like that is all helping you the connection is really helping you become the master of your own reality and help you step into your power in a way where you realize like there's a perfect divine flow to things i don't have to rush i'm not behind i'm not ahead i'm right where i'm meant to be and I feel like it's just bringing you so much balance and it's going to be really making life exciting and, and worth feeling and worth engaging in again. So I love that. And I feel like for your person as well, I feel like once they have a sense of groundedness, like, and, and I think that's something they're working on, I think they'll realize like life is so much more interesting when, when there are stakes, you know, when, when there's something to be engaged in. Um, okay, but let's go ahead and finish off with some guidance. So, ooh, okay. Spirit, what guidance do you have for pile one when it comes to this connection and their life in general, please? We have dreams. Dreams are where your mind translates the divine. So we have Labradorite. So you may want to do some dream work or pay attention to messages in your dreams, synchronicities in your dreams. Um, you know, if you're trying to get in touch with your internal world, if you're in high priestess mode, you may want to use Labradorite. Um, I have some right here and right here. A very pretty stone. What other guidance do you have for pile one, please? We have compassion. Resolve your conflicts with compassion. Yeah, I definitely feel like whatever internal stuff the universe is getting you to look at, the key to moving through it is compassion. Compassion, acceptance, understanding. I feel like that will also help you see your person 
or see your situation in a different light where you realize like maybe a lot of the pressure or a lot of the frustration that you were dealing with, you know, could have maybe was exacerbated by a mentality or exacerbated by your own wounds or insecurities and just realizing that you can be compassionate and compassionate towards yourself and understanding and you know, and if you want to, if it feels right to extend that compassion to your person, like that is also perfectly acceptable as well. You don't need to keep score. You don't need to hold on to the past. And in fact, forgiveness is, is the key to moving into a new version and a new future. Not saying that you have to forgive anyone or do anything you don't want to do, but forgiveness is a very powerful tool. Okay. One more spirit. What other guidance do you have for pile four? And we have deaths. Yes. We have destiny. Follow your instincts. They lead to the truth. Like, yeah, I don't think it could get any clearer than that. Like, you're already, you're getting into alignment with your destiny. The connection is doing its job and it may not always be fun. It may not always be what you anticipated and it may not always be sunshines and rainbows, but it's leading you to way more sunshines and rainbows than you could ever imagine. And I feel like, you know, you're exactly where you need to be. Nothing is out of place and you're doing amazing, sweetie. So pile one, that is where I'm going to leave this reading. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. And thank you so much for letting my ads play in the background because that's one of the simplest and easiest ways to support me and show appreciation for my channel help me pay my rent. Um, if you would like to help me pay my rent in other ways, <laughs> you can check out the extended down below. You can check out my candles. Be sure to use Cody. So 10 for 10% off. You can check out my merch. You can check out my social media. You can like, comment, subscribe, shout out to my notification squad. If you want me to see your comments, I usually see them when I first upload. And then after that, it's a mystery. So just note that. Um, but that's all I have for you guys. So thank you so much for watching and for letting me read for you. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading and thank you so much for being here. If you guys chose the little lapis lazuli heart and the sleepwalkers tarot, this is going to be your reading on a check-in for you and your divine counterpart and your connection. So if you'd like a full breakdown of the reading, there is one in the intro, but we're going to start by looking at your current energies. You are going to be on the left, your person on the right. So starting with your energies, we have proud peacock, prestige, self-respect, awareness, regal bird, bursting with color, your confidence and grace, I would know. And we have waning moon with releasing. Then we have the ethereal and material energies of the connection right now. So for that, we have walking away and Arcturians. Hang on. I feel like some of you are like, oh, I don't, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see that. It's fine. Hang in, hang with me. I promise it's fine. <laughs> There's a lot of different scenarios here. So um, and then your person's energy, we have wisdom, perception, discipline, the orderly owl, solitary watcher of the night, give me a sacred vision in moonlight, and we have child with development. Okay, so I number one, I think one of the things that I really like about this energy is that you both came out as birds, which I just, I don't know, I feel like the birds of a feather uh, vibe kind of goes really well for you guys. Um, but this is a cool situation where the energy should resonate for all of you if you pick the right reading, but the semantics of how it is playing out in your life, in your world, in your connection is likely going to be quite different to other people watching and that is, and that is okay. What I'm seeing here is that there's a lot of massive shifts happening for you and your person, whether you both are together, whether you know one another in this lifetime yet or not. I do also want to mention that just because you may feel that you have a counterpart connection and you just haven't met them yet, and that's absolutely okay. Um, trust what is in your heart. And the connection is still working with you in that case because it goes beyond what's just happening physically. So what I really see here is there is a lot happening in terms of the connection. No matter how much you and your person are engaging with one another in the physical dimension or not. The fact that we have walking away here, this can apply to anything. For a specific few of you, it could apply to walking away from the connection itself. Though I feel like that is more of a temporary decision for your own sanity rather than a 
like, oh, I'm completely severing this. Um, but I feel like for a lot of you, this walking away doesn't have to do with like things related to this connection. It has a lot to do with walking away from just what hasn't been serving you. For you and your person, there's this massive energy of expansion and this energy of evolution into just, this sounds like so douchey and I, I don't like mean it in that way but you're, you're trying to evolve your consciousness I guess I was I was gonna say like ascend to a higher plane of existence but like I don't think ascension I think evolution is probably a better word than ascension and I think in your case so we have Arcturians here which is really cool so Arcturian beings could be working with you both um, Arcturians are really really fascinating beings that um, are mostly non-physical uh, but they do a lot with healing especially healing things into wholeness and unity i feel like both of you are integrating powerful levels of unity consciousness where you are figuring out how to integrate aspects of self that are a lot more challenging than what you're normally used to so for example let's look at you one thing that you're integrating right now is releasing what is stopping you from being more confident in yourself, having a, a higher level of self-esteem, and also making decisions from a place of self-worth. I feel like in your case, there's probably a level here, or a level, there's probably um, a pattern that you've been experiencing where you have the desire to act in ways that are different than what you've been doing. You have the desire to take certain risks or step into certain circles that maybe you thought weren't for you or that you weren't good enough for. And now you're realizing, oh yeah, actually I am. I am allowed to do like what um, I am allowed to do what I want. I am allowed to take risks. And I feel like what, what you are doing is opening up your own cage and kind of releasing the need to feel held back and releasing your comfort zone is a big thing that I think you are letting go of. I also think you are just recognizing your value more. And also I think that if you've been in kind of a funk, this Arcturian energy that's being integrated, I think is really helping you gain more clarity and realize like how okay it is to be struggling and that like, you know, when you when we fall back on choices that, you know, we're not proud of or when we do things that just reinforce an old version of self, we don't have to beat ourselves up for that. We don't even have to, you know, think about it more deeply than just, oh, this isn't me. This isn't this isn't fulfilling me. This isn't helping me. I can walk away from this. I can choose something different. I, I think the power of choice is really being highlighted for you. And I feel like there's just a lot of healing happening for the both of you. The interesting thing is, is I don't know how much you and this person are connecting um, in the physical because I feel like for a lot of you, you could be connecting quite frequently. You could be with this person. Um, but it seems like the way the connection is working with you has a lot to do with the both of you has a lot to do with your own self unions, has to do with your own um, individual growth. I feel like for your person, they're definitely in a bit of a hermit mode. The fact that we even have solitary watcher of the night, I wouldn't be shocked if they're up a lot at night right now, or if um, they are kind of just keeping to themselves. Even if you are um, with them already, or just with them in general, I wouldn't be shocked if they've kind of been a bit more removed, or they've just been kind of in their own world a little bit. They're definitely processing and integrating a lot. And the fact that we have child here with development, um, it could be related to an actual child, but I'm getting this more as your counterpart building a new, their, their, their expansion that's happening right now is, is they are adding to themselves, adding to their internal repertoire, their internal like toolkit and adding parts of self that they did not have before like they're growing in certain ways like the example that i'm getting is if you both are houses you're the house that is getting decluttered that's getting uh reorganized that's getting that's getting like reset whereas i feel like your counterpart their house is being as having an addition put onto it and so it's like you both are in the process right now of filtering and refining 
this process and I feel like there is a lot of emphasis on your own personal journeys right now even if you are in communication even if you are in a relationship with them there is a lot here about stepping into sovereignty more deeply stepping into authenticity more deeply and there is this just massive energy around the both of you right now where it's like I gotta stop putting up with other people's sh up, putting up with other people's shit I gotta stop putting up with my own shit like I've got to change like there's just this energy of things need to change like things need to evolve and I feel like you both are doing that and you're doing that quite well I, I feel like more than anything um, there is a lot of loving support in the unseen realms that are supporting the both of you through this process and are so proud of the growth that both of you have already made. I definitely feel like um, your counterpart is probably in a position right now where things feel really awkward for them, especially if they are the type of person who normally feels very in control or seems very in control. Like they are, their their footing is quite shaky right now and almost like like a kid learning how to walk, you know? they're um, learning this new way of being. And I feel like for you, there is just this awareness of what isn't working anymore, what needs to be let go of, because I feel like you are also in the process of building, but it's like the building can't happen until we've released what isn't helping us, what isn't, what isn't helping me. Um, I definitely think the both of you are in the process of, of just leaving your comfort zone and walking away from old patterns of being and I think that there is this beautiful, fresh slate that is being created right now within both of you internally and then within the connection itself. So even if um, you haven't met this person yet, it's like when you do meet them, it's likely that you will feel like there is this fresh slate. You'll feel that already and that might be something that brings them in. But um, if you are have already met them and you know you have a past with them, like, you know, this this energy could be quite indicative of, you know, clear, wiping the slate clean, you know, having things like forgiveness if, if that needs to be there or just restarting, regrouping. There's this beautiful energy here where both of you are stepping out of fear and into love in ways that really challenge how much you are willing to face the discomfort of growth in order to see in order to keep seeing where love is leading both of you. Um, I can definitely see here that both of you are really honestly doing a great job. And I it may not feel that way. And it may be hard to see where all of this is leading the both of you. Um, but I think that you're both heading in an awesome direction. And I think if you're wondering if if something is going wrong or that if you know if things aren't happening according to how you visualized them just know that that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong and i think more than anything i just heard the words banishing ritual so for some of you there might be some energies or like people from your past or just like stuff that you may just want to like get rid of um i can definitely see here that anything that does not contribute to your feeling to feelings of empowerment sovereignty trust and truth for you um you don't need to keep them in your life uh i also think as well you're really being encouraged to lean into expressing yourself and like doing things for yourself just for the sake of kindness like kindness to yourself for making yourself feel good. Like there's definitely a beautiful energy um, on your end that's about embracing like your physical body and, and what makes you feel good in that body and like how you like to adorn it and things like that. I, I definitely think that there is a level of self-expression that you're ready to step into that maybe you weren't in the past that um, is maybe one of the big shifts. And, and I think that through that self-expression, you might find that um, you have a lot more confidence just because you are sharing a version of yourself that is true to you. I definitely think that your person, like I said, is very deep in hermit mode, in, in this growth mode. Um, they're trying to be disciplined, but I think they're experiencing a lot of chaos. And I think that part of this process right now is um, needing to move through this chaos. I do feel like both of you are in like very different places in terms of what you are 
integrating but I feel like you are both integrating different opposite like if if they're on the same spectrum it's like you're on the opposites of it and um I feel like you're learning similar lessons and I definitely think that there's there's not a whole lot of like sporadic interaction it seems it seems like if if there is like a set dynamic between the two of you already it seems like that is just continuing as the status quo um and meanwhile you both are kind of like working on yourselves but if you've not met your counterpart yet um I can definitely see here that like you both are working really hard on growth on evolution on expansion and I love to see it I feel like this might be a theme in counterpart collectives right now because pile one didn't have the same message it was quite different energy but there there's similar vibes of, of growth and improvement i apologize in advance because this tarot deck is quite slippery <laughs> and it uh is a little bit messy but i didn't get a whole lot in terms of what your person is like like how they're showing up because it seems like if they're showing up they're showing up as they typically do um i feel like there's a consistency to them um and if they're not showing up, it's because they're working really hard on themselves. Like they're really in their own isolated bubble, like focusing on their own growth. Um, but if you do want to get deeper insight into them, we are going to be looking at a lot about how they perceive you in the extended. Like the theme is you and your person's world. So we're going to look at things like, you know, what do they fantasize about when it comes to you and them? And who are you in those fantasies? We're going to look at um, how often they think about you and get, try to get a percentage. Um, we're also going to see like what do they actually think about. We're also going to look at like what supernatural or like weird experiences have they had um, through your connection. And uh, what do they know slash believe when it comes to your connection. So, and if you haven't met them yet, then um, the extended will be more like, like in the future after you have. But huh four of wands let's just see that just popping up uh you certainly don't i feel like that's just that's a positive beautiful sign that you guys need to see um if you don't that's absolutely okay but uh do you did just want to mention that as a as an option great way to support they're also really fun but if not i'm just grateful you're here but we're gonna go ahead now and start shuffling your well i've been shuffling your tarot we're gonna start pulling your cards and we're just gonna start by looking at number one we're gonna start by not messing up the cards so much we're gonna start by looking at what it is you need to know most about your counterpart situation right now so spirit what does pile two need to know most when it comes to them and their counterpart connection with their counterpart please beautiful okay so number one I do think there's going to be a profound shift in this connection. Um, and this profound shift is either going to be created because of the profound shifts happening within you, within the both of you, or it, this profound shift is happening, I don't want to say in divine timing, but in, in, in a way that is out of your control, but happening at the perfect time. With this judgment card being here, it definitely seems like there is information that you are not privy to right now that um, that seems to be quite positive, but they're not. I wonder. I wonder if there's like Arcturian energy behind this, um, but it's not being revealed what information this is. Partially because it's likely different for um, all of you, but also because there are certain things that you need to be in alignment with in order to receive this information and you're getting in alignment with it right now. Um, another thing, if you have projected some type of idea that this connection can only happen in this way or me, I, I can only meet this person if this happens. If you have any set beliefs about the connection, I do think that it would be really useful to maybe release those um just because you might find that there is some sort of profound transformation that like completely knocks your socks off or just shocks you in a way where you realize like oh i was wrong like i was limiting things like limiting beliefs seem to be something that really uh hold you down and hold this connection back 
and I feel like you you and your counterpart in the pro are in the process of removing those but there's also something you need to know that that like everything is okay and because you're in the dark it doesn't mean you won't be forever in fact like the information that you need is coming in the perfect time in the perfect way and there are profound shifts happening just because you can't see them yet doesn't mean that they're not there. It's like you are in, you are not a flower that is in bloom, but you're getting there. Like you're growing. You're not a seed anymore. Like like you you've got a nice stalk. You know, you got a little bud forming, but it's it's, it's a little bit of time before you're ready to bloom. And that's all right. I also feel like you could um you could get really profound um guidance from the divine. And if you do, you will you will know it when you get it, and it will come right when you need it. This judgment card to me is really speaking to the fact that there are factors of this connection out of your hands, but you're already doing what is necessary on your end, and you're already getting yourself in the position that's making the divine job a lot easier. And I feel like what, however the connection is right now, like you can expect it to shift quite dramatically. And I don't see that shift being negative. Um, I think it's going to be shifting quite dramatically in a positive direction, but I don't wanna say that because positive, what, what you interpret as a positive or negative shift could be different. Um, and what the shift is, is going to be different for all of you. But like, I, I do feel like there is going to be a profound shift in how you and this person, you and your counterpart connect. Um, you know, this could be, if you haven't met them yet, um, meeting them, like, I feel like that could be a profound experience that kind of happens out of, out of your hands. And is just kind of very serendipitous. Um, but if you are already like with your counterpart, for example, I feel like there could be a really profound shift that brings you closer together. Um, and that also helps the both of you maybe work through insecurities that you've had around this time where, you know, maybe you are feeling more disconnected and it does feel like, you know, your counterpart's a bit removed and they might be the type of person that struggles to really articulate um, what's going on internally until they've had time to like process it and understand it. So it may be like, you know, if you're talking to them and they're like, oh, everything's fine. And you're like, I feel like it's not fine though. In, in their mind, it's like, yeah, it's fine. Like whatever they're going through, but they don't know how to explain it yet. And they also don't want to like put words to the experience because they don't want to like be over dramatic or something like that. I feel like this person <sighs> carries a lot of burdens, but they're also somebody who, um, doesn't necessarily recognize that and is very good at just being like nonchalant about pretty intense challenges and you might be able to pick up on it but they're like they may not even realize how challenging that cycle was until they look at it in hindsight but um expect transformation and what you need to know is is that that transformation is happening on a timing that you can't control but you are doing an excellent job of getting yourself in the position to be ready to receive it and um, Archangel Gabriel might be a good uh, Archangel to work with or might be the uh, messenger. Isn't, aren't they the messenger angel? I know I talked to Joan of Arc, Mother Mary, anyone else? <laughs> cousin Freddy, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a cousin Freddy, I don't know <laughs> why I said that. Okay, um, all right. Now let's look at how your counterpart is currently experiencing the connection. So what is Pile 2's counterpart's experience of the connection at this time? Oh, okay. We have the Five of Wands. My cards are spilling everywhere, which is so fun and totally doesn't drive me nuts. Um, okay, so we have the Five of Wands and the Knight of Pentacles. So, okay, this like order, order energy makes a lot of sense. Your counterpart is in a position right now where their status quo is no longer working for them and that is very challenging. It seems like they're not in conflict with others. Like if they're in conflict with you, which I don't really see like, but if, if that is your case, um, I can see here that they are having a hard time like trusting their perception of things. And I feel like because they're realizing that maybe um, their, like the, their system of things, like the way that they look at things needs updates. Um, the fact that we have the Five of Wands and the Knight of Pentacles though, it does seem like there is, or there are shifts 
that um, your person is fighting. It seems like the connection itself is creating a lot of stress around their routine and around um, what has worked for them in the past. And it's really asking them to step into a different kind of action. You know, the Knight of Pentacles, when it comes to taking action, not only are they the slowest knight, but you know, they're quite methodical and quite uh, consistent and practical. So, you know, if your person has the, those qualities or their routine has those qualities um, the way that they structure their life does i can see here that there is a lot of tension and resistance towards that i feel like especially because your person is needing more more light back into their life which hello the arcturians are helping with that but they also like need more joy more um more than just what they have been sticking to. Like, I feel like your counterpart has been pushing away a lot of opportunities to experience life at, at a more intense level or just at a more, um, just experiencing life rather than existing in life. I feel like that's what's really happening for them. And I don't think that they're really enjoying that. I feel like they are also feeling the resistance of this change and feeling like you know the universe is kind of fighting them i do feel like they may be struggling uh with their confidence levels right now and feeling like um you know the universe is not they might feel like the universe is against them or that they're doing something wrong or that um something terrible is going to happen so i feel like they're really trying to deal with like internal fires right now and they're just they're just doing things the same way as normal and being like yep this is fine but there is growth happening i do feel like they are being led in the directions of growth and development um and maybe for some of you this person needs more consistency and you know that so like maybe that could be one of the things that they're integrating but i feel like for a lot of you it's the opposite like this person is quite diligent and organized and like with it and as a result, it, it does not leave a lot of room for spontaneity. It doesn't leave a lot of room for growth and exploration. And I feel like there are parts of your counterpart's heart that are just not being activated because they're not activated in the daily routines like of, of your counterpart's life. Like they need more action. They need more um, passion is what I'm hearing. And they don't even realize that because they're so focused on what they've been doing and like what they think works i it's interesting because uh, like there's not a lot coming through here when it comes to you and i feel like that's either because like you are already a solid presence in their life um and that just and they're like they don't want to like worry you about like what they're dealing with or what they're going through um if they if you haven't met them yet then that then that makes sense and that's just the experience of the connection uh but if things like between you and them are up in the air or you're not really communicating, it seems like they're very focused on their own um, on their own world right now. We'll have to kind of look at the extended and see what's going on more deeply, but it does seem like there's a lot of their thoughts and energy that's dedicated and devoted to getting out of this cycle and, and learning as much as they can as quickly as possible, which is kind of hard with that Knight of Pentacles because they're definitely on the struggle bus right now but the struggle bus for them is like really funny because it's like what what they consider a struggle someone else would be like wow like that's so put together that's so organized that's so impressive so it, it's really it, it's i guess it's uh their their version of struggle and and it might be I, th I think it is very vulnerable for them they could be having conflict in uh in their world like with family or friends that could be causing them to be even more isolated and maybe it's conflict with you but I really don't feel a lot of like tension uh between you and your person um if there is a lot of tension between you and your person you may want to try pile one I think pile one might be more your speed but um I do think at the very least there's this um emphasis on focus on overcoming a lot of struggle and a lot of challenge that that the energy of the connection is is placing on them which is a lot about like okay you can't keep doing things the same way like you need to invigorate yourself again like you need to have different energies in your life other than just what you're doing every single day so okay 
Now I want to see what a good way to connect with your counterpart in the connection is at this time. So what is a good way for Pile 2 to connect with their counterpart and the connection? Okay, we have the Nine of Pentacles, which I love. So, look. okay, look at the vibes. Like, I'm sorry. Corporate needs to tell you, the, needs you to find the difference between these two pictures. They're the same picture. Like, <laughs> the best way to connect with the connection right now is to connect with yourself. Like the nine of pentacles is a solitary energy, but it's also an energy about enjoying the fruits of your labors. It's about caring for yourself. It's about knowing your worth. And it's also about trusting in what you know and feel to be true. So like, if you know that everything's fine here, or you know that, you know, connection with your counterpart right now is kind of challenging because they're really busy or they're really focused on other things, then it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to chill and I'm going to hang here. Like, I feel like this could also be though, you know, anything that makes you feel good about yourself, that makes you feel confident, secure, like the, the royalty that you are, engage in that. Engage in things that, that boost your self-esteem, that make you feel good, that make you feel like a million dollars. Should I say a billion? A million's like not that much these days. I mean, it's obviously still a lot of money and more money than I've ever seen in my entire life, but like on, on like an inflation level, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, I definitely think that if you are wanting to connect with your counterpart right now and, and that seems to be a challenge, um, the best way that you can connect with them is through yourself. And I know that sounds frustrating, but it's really important to have that connection established. And I do feel like there are certain things that, um, if you are trying to build your own abundance right now, that could be a good way. Um, maybe there are some aspects of your counterpart's like way of being that maybe you should be integrating. like. You know, maybe you need more consistency in your routine or maybe you need more practicality and that will help boost your, your finances or help you feel more abundant or give you more time and energy to focus on what you want. I do feel like the connection is emphasizing a lot of um, inner work for the both of you and a lot of like personal development. And that is one of the greatest forms of love that there is. And I feel like in this case, this is a time for you to like really enjoy the fruits of your labor and really just appreciate where you're at and appreciate how far you've come and appreciate the fact that like, you know, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of growth to be where you're, you're at and you deserve to relish in that. Um, I feel like if you are thinking about like traveling, uh, especially if you can like have kind of a trip that that is very... See, I think there's a difference between like traveling and vacationing. I'm more of a vacationer. I, I want to be comfortable. <laughs> like I like I'm not a hostile girly, but or nor am I a hostile girly, H-O-S-T-I-L-E. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so maybe like for you, maybe you, you're you more of a vacationer like me and you, you want, want to go travel, but you want to do something comfortable and chill. Like, I don't want to do work if I am traveling. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything other than vegetate in a new space and maybe walk around a bit, enjoy some things, explore. But like, if you have an itinerary, get that shit out of my face. Like, no, absolutely not. If you expect me to wake up before noon, you're, you're on crack. Like that's not happening. <laughs> I don't know where that rant came from, but if maybe, maybe you need a little treat yourself trip. Um, then that's nothing. I, I shout out to the people that, that can do that though, that like, that are travelers that, you know, do see the world and like, don't need a million comforts in order to leave their house. I just find, you know, the, uh, the experience of moving in the physical dimension in any capacity to be draining, frustrating, and uh, something I'd like to make is un... Something I like to make is, like, decent as possible and possibly even enjoyable. But, yeah, if you can, if you can give yourself a little bit of luxury travel, do it. Um, anyway... If there's also any ways that you connect with your counterpart that just make you feel good about yourself, do that. Um, 
but you know for some of you it may be like this situation where you're like i don't really have the opportunity to connect with them right now and so it's like okay so let's connect with our self-worth let's connect with self-love like these are energies that you need to be familiar with and comfortable with even in connection with your counterpart so be aware of that okay so let's see now how the connecting energy is working with you both which i think we kind of already got this but just to confirm how is the connecting energy working six of pentacles yeah i mean okay so there seems to be a lot here with finances but also balancing things out um it seems like the, the connecting energy is working with you both in ways where you are learning how to balance give and take uh when it comes to yourself when it comes to others but also i feel like you're learning a lot of important lessons around abundance abundant thinking prosperity consciousness and also just like the nature of creation you know the nature of stepping into a new version of yourself and and what opportunities that holds and what new experiences could happen as a result i also feel like there is an energy here of the connection teaching you both that you're not obligated to you're not obligated to anything but also you know what you do give is valuable and sacred and those that receive from you deserve to be like you deserve to have people in your life that receive gratefully but don't take as an expectation and I feel like that's something that you're both integrating I also feel like you both are, are finding just a healthy level of okay like how much of myself can I give and how much of myself do I need to reserve for me? I also feel like in terms of connecting with each other, the connection is helping both of you have better self-esteem and have more just resources, time and energy to connect with one another. Um, if you do know one another yet and if you don't, I feel like you're both getting in this position where you are able to give back more, you're able to serve more, but not in ways that do, do that are a disservice to you. I feel like <laughs> I just heard the phrase like God's little warriors and it's like you are and I mean I I that word might be kind of like jarring for some people the the universe's little warriors what loves little warrior your loves little warriors and and I feel like in that process you are learning about love especially in the physical dimension and like how love translates physically and that's not just with another person but just like is your do you love your space is does your space feel loving and welcoming you know do you love where you are do you feel loved in your current environment you know things like that and also like you know think about cooking like like cooking love into what you make like there are so many ways to bring love into this world and i feel like you're learning how to do that in so many different ways which is super super cool and um i also feel like there's a lot of rebalancing. So wherever you are struggling, like that's where you're gaining strength and that's where you're going to be seeing shifts and change, not only within yourself, but in your counterpart and in how you both relate to one another. So let's go ahead and finish this reading off with some guidance. So Spirit, what guidance do you have for Pile 2, please? What, what does Pile 2 need to know? at this time when it comes to their counterpart connection and their life in general. So we have sodalite, which is this, which is the stone. Vulnerability, showing vulnerability is a sign of strength. So yeah, I definitely think that you're being encouraged to embrace your vulnerability and embrace the things that make you feel vulnerable because those are the opportunities to really see like what you're made of. And, and the fact that like your fears are so much less loud when you just have the courage to go beyond them and face them what else i also feel like if you want to be vulnerable to your counterpart like you can absolutely do that like if you want to tell them like how you're feeling or what you're thinking or if you feel like you should wait for that 
absolutely do whatever you feel is right. But also I think that it will not hurt in any way to express vulnerability. Um, but I do feel like if you're expecting that vulnerability in return, you might be disappointed because I do feel like your counterpart is less comfortable with that vulnerability and it may be you stepping into leadership um, in, in this case where you kind of feel out what it feels like to be vulnerable before your person starts to dip their toes in the water. It's like, you might be willing to get in the water first, but they're like, okay, test the water. Then let me, let me, let me take my time getting in. Okay, what other guidance do you have um, for pile two spirit? We have connection, Father Divine and Mother Earth make love in your heart. So I definitely think that there is a lot of just like full integration of like your energy of your body like there's there's a lot of unity coming and i also feel like this is a beautiful sign as well that both of you are integrating powerful lessons on like a lot of different planes and you're really just being encouraged to not get too focused on like one issue or one thing like you're you're growing in so many ways and if you're too focused on that you might be missing out on like you know, a lot of cool things happening or a lot of like interesting experiences happening internally. You're doing great though. You're definitely connected and you're not doing, you're nothing, nothing is amiss. Nothing is out of place. Uh, but finally, Spirit, can you give us one more uh, card, please? We have the whole, yes. Ah, I love this. Okay. Embrace the balance between earth and spirit. So this is just telling me like, yeah, you guys are you guys are learning to em embrace unity, wholeness, and balance. And I mean, the connection is doing its thing. And on the back of the deck, we have love. Like love is a verb, so make it your most treasured action. And I feel like that is something that you guys are doing. You're learning how to make all your actions be from love and have loving interactions, not only with each other, but with the world. And as frustrating as it might be to not always get like the sentimental messages i feel like this is this is the sentimental messages meet me over in the extended but i i do feel like you know when it comes to the connection it is so much more than just like romance it is uh it has a spiritual utility it has a utility period and um i feel like the utility of it right now is it's really getting you both into a much more powerful position to really create what you want um not only with each other but in the world and um experience what life is like as yourselves in, in an authentic and empowered way ah i'm so excited for you so pile two that's where i'm going to leave your reading thank you guys so 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 much for watching thank you so much for letting my ads play in the background that is one of the simplest and easiest ways to show support and appreciation for my channel so thank you to everyone who does that but if you would like to support me in other ways you can like this video you can comment down below let me know how it resonates you can subscribe if you haven't already you can click that little notification bell to be notified whenever i upload a new reading shout out to my notification squad i love you guys um if you want me to see your comments i usually see comments when i first upload after that it's kind of a who knows game um if you would like to support me in other ways you can check out my merch social media my candles uh but really helpful is the extended uh i think other than that though that's all i have for you guys so thank you so much for watching and for letting me read for you i hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video and i hope you'll come back and see me again soon bye hi there pile three welcome to your reading and thank you so much for being here if you guys chose the aqua aura quartz or the aura quartz with different different colors and the brits third eye tarot this is going to be your reading on a check-in for you and your divine counterpart so if you want a full breakdown of the reading there is one in the intro now uh what i was saying what we're going to do is we're going to check and make sure that this is your reading. So we're gonna start by looking at you over on the left, your person on the right, and then the connecting energies between the two of you. Between the two of you. I'm already having trouble talking. I was not tongue-tied <laughs> until now. So that might be a theme for both of you, but to start, we have earnest elephant, gentleness, temperance, goodwill, pillar of patience and kindness. Bless my heart with your gentle nature. We have lower world with below and south with middle. Okay. 
Then your person, your counterparts, uh, energies, we have a grounded goat, persistence, discipline, stability, sure-footed mountain dweller, bless me with your balance and grace, and we have voice with truth. Okay, and then these cards represent the material and ethereal energies, um, the connections experiencing right now, and so for that we have attachment, and dolphin baby lemurian origin flow timeless adaptable free take your time okay so let's start with you pile three because it seems like you are undergoing quite an intense process and you're handling it like a champ i definitely think that you're at this place where you've gained a lot of wisdom through your past experiences but you may be at a place now where you're like completely unsure of what's going on what you're doing what's happening but i see this beautiful energy and this beautiful essence with you where there's not a whole lot of pressure that you're putting on yourself or the connection um or on yourself when it comes to engaging with the connection but i do think there is pressure you're putting on yourself when it comes to the internal processes that you're going through the fact we have south and lower world i feel like your energy and your passion and your inner fire uh is in a process of being relit but it's like right now you're in this process of um decaying and, and death where like what has been holding you back what you've been attached to like whatever attachments that have really brought you like stress and frustration i love how similar like this looks like the dolphin baby card so i'm just gonna put it right here <laughs> i like i like how how they match um it seems like you are in this process where you may not have much of an idea of really what's going on at all in life in general not just in your counterpart connection but I can see here that there is an earnestness around like actually engaging with what the energies are trying to teach you. I feel like when it comes to engaging with your counterpart, like you tend to be very kind, very gentle and very patient with them. It doesn't seem like you have any intense expectations or it doesn't seem like you have hard feelings around the connection in any way. Um, if you do, you may want to check out a different group because uh, I'm not seeing a lot of hard feelings here. In fact, I feel like of the three groups, this is probably the group where things are the most grounded and established between the two of you. I wouldn't be shocked. Like, like this is the group where I would say I would be more surprised if you haven't met one another yet, but that it could still apply if you haven't met them. Um, but I feel like for a lot of you, you have met this person. You could even be in a relationship with them. Uh, but I think that if you chose this group, you probably know who your counterpart is and you're in, at, a varying, at varying stages. I definitely think the light that's trying to be integrated in this connection is really beautiful. It's a lot about going back to basics, to simplicity, to letting go of timing and complex structures, but also finding ways to work in harmony with complex structures and the things that just the material world requires of us. I do feel like in terms of your connection, there the light that's being integrated is a simplicity of how you and your counterpart connect with one another. Because it seems like right now, there is attachment to certain ways of behaving with one another, maybe out of fear, maybe out of conditioning, or maybe just out of like not even realizing that you can engage with one another in a different way. I do feel like there is quite a, quite a significant bond already established between the two of you and there might be attachment towards like what's happened between the two of you in the past or attachment to things that make it harder to connect with one another it seems like in general both of you are being drawn to what attachments make life unnecessarily complex and what attachments make it hard to just enjoy the simplicity of being i feel like there is this beautiful energy where the both of you when you're together like time just disappears and there isn't a there's like a weightlessness to interaction with each other when you're together even though it might be like kind of scary at times like you might not want to say everything on your mind but it seems like you're both able to be more present i do feel like your counterpart let's talk about your counterpart with the grounded goat here I definitely feel like your counterpart has made a lot of strides when it comes to 
acting with integrity when it comes to this connection like I feel like if your counterpart avoided you or avoided the connection a lot in the past I feel like they found they found a comfortable like rhythm or they found a they're finding their footing literally uh when it comes to engaging with the connection I feel like they are starting to embrace what their truth is whatever their truth may be and I feel like they are showing up in your world in a very consistent way um if you're not communicating with them then I definitely think that communication is something that they're considering right now um or at the very least they're getting a lot of truth about this connection about themselves I definitely think that they if they if you are interacting with them and that this world in this physical world I definitely think they're showing up in a consistent way or um they're very honest about where their time and attention is headed and they're acting on that like if there's not a lot of time and attention towards you I feel like it's towards their goals or what they're working on and they've likely told you that and they're probably very clear about that but that doesn't mean that they're not still um honest about like like I feel like your counterpart at the very least like they might not reveal all of their feelings but they don't act like they're disinterested or that like they're too busy for you it's just that they might be really busy and they are finding ways to still connect with you without letting go of their goals like they're definitely someone who is quite disciplined and I feel like they see the longevity of this connection and I feel like right now a lot of their goals are around cultivating and creating a more uh free-flowing connection with you and I feel like the process to getting there for them is creating more stability in their material world but also creating more stability emotionally I definitely feel like in your case there may be attachment to timing and maybe for both of you there is like frustrations around time frustrations around how long things are taking or frustrations around uncertainties of what's happening um and I feel like in your case, you're more so in the dark than your person is. Like, I feel like your person has some sort of awareness that you don't around, like, timing. Like, maybe there's some element of timing that that's, you know, that they're starting to get a better idea of where it, that they're not communicating to you, maybe because you didn't ask or because they don't want to make promises if it's not, like, a sure thing. But I do think in your case, there's less awareness of what's going on. I feel like you're almost like <laughs> you're you're literally Patrick Star under a rock. Like I feel like you're even I wouldn't be shocked if your like psychic or extrasensory perception is even uh struggling right now. Um and the reason for that I feel is like you are undergoing a deep process of transformation. That's actually been like a theme in all of the groups. Like there's a lot of evolution and transformation. I love to see that in the collab collective but I do feel like you may be feeling pressure like like you're doing something wrong or that you're not doing enough or that something needs to be done that you're not doing and I feel like you're you're doing amazing sweetie you really don't need to be pressuring yourself so much I do feel like one of the hardest things though is that you're having to integrate patience not only with this connection but with yourself and I feel like both of you are being drawn to look at what attachments are holding the both of you back I feel like if anything your person, your your counterpart, a lot of their lessons are related to you and how they engage with you and and the attachments that they have that that block their ability to engage and connect with you whereas your your growth, like your lessons right now seem to be primarily focused on you and focused on it almost kind of seems like a lot of the weight of the connection has been put in your person's camp and in the meantime it's like you're getting necessary rest and regeneration and also I feel like you're being geared up for a pretty significant initiation of some kind that I think is going to be really revitalizing and really empowering um but right now it might feel like you are failing or that you have no clue what's going on and you might be quite afraid and I love that you're the elephant because elephants you know what they move through obstacles like not nobody's business and they have the wisdom and maturity to handle those obstacles 
with grace. And I think that you are doing that. It's just that you don't have much insight. Like everything that's happening in the connection, I feel like in your case is a lot more centered around how it's impacting you personally in your personal experiences. Like if you're interacting with your counterpart, I feel like that's just like a beautiful part of your day or like a, a nice a nice addition to like what's happening in your life, but it's not like the central focus. Whereas like your counterpart is having this experience where you and the connection are becoming a very central focus of their reality. And if they're if you're not literally becoming it, the the truth that that's what they want and that's where they're headed, like that is being integrated. So I would not be shocked if um, your counterpart shows, starts showing up more or starts communicating more earnestly um, or is just getting into position to make that happen. I feel like there's definitely truths that they're integrating about the connection where they're just realizing like, I want to, I just want things to be simpler. I just want things to be earnest and authentic with pile three. And I just want, I just want to be in that truth. I definitely think that there is a, a stability that they're trying to create within themselves so that they can also have it with you. Um, but I also think that there are fears around timing that both of you have, that your light energies are trying to help both of you, like through the connection, they're trying to help both of you release because you are exactly where you need to be. You're right on time and nothing is out of place. It may feel that way, but that's not the truth. Like there's a lot more happening than meets the eye. And I feel like in your case, file three, like you just need to keep doing your best. You're already doing great. And I feel like in your counterpart's case, like how they handle these energies, I think is going to be different, but I, I do feel like they could be surprising you um, with how they show up or with how they communicate. Like they might be less attached to, um, like they might be, they might communicate more freely than they did in the past because they're feeling less pressure or um, they're feeling less afraid to be more honest. But even if they're not um, like communicating with you, at the very least, they're integrating a lot of truth around this connection that's um, quite profound for them and very impactful and very encouraging as well is what I'm hearing. So we're going to go ahead and get into the tarot now, if that resonated. <laughs> Welcome to your reading. Uh, but I'm actually really excited for your extended because I feel like your person, I want to see what their truth is. Like, what what are they thinking? Like, what are they fantasizing about? So um, if you're interested in the extended, we're going to be looking at things like um, what do they fantasize about when it comes to you and them? And who are you in those fantasies? We're going to be looking at things like... Um, what do they know about the connection? What do they believe about the connection? Um, what supernatural experiences have they had when it comes to the connection? Um, also, like, how often do they think about you? What what percentage, even, if we can get one? Uh, and we'll also see, like, what specifically, what do they think about? So, if you're interested, that'll be linked below. But... If not, I'm just grateful you're here. And if you want to support in a free way, just like in the video, letting the ads play. Super helpful. So thank you to everyone who does that. But okay, we're going to start by looking at what you need to know most about, about this connection. So pile three spirit, what do they need to know most about their connection with their person at this time, with their counterpart? Okay. Beautiful. I'm going to get another one since it flipped out and it hid. What else does pile three need to know about their connection with their... I love this. Uh, yeah, keep moving forward. <laughs> like, what you need to know is, is that what you're walking away from, whatever attachments you're releasing, are getting you prepared for the future. And, like, I feel really called to say, like, there's nowhere to go but up and I feel like you're just being encouraged to keep going like keep releasing the past like keep being open and optimistic about the future like that is what is really helping you gain momentum and I feel like you're already on the right path like you're exactly where you need to be it's just a matter of trusting and and being patient with the process of linear time which is hard 
Um, but really what you need to know is, is that like any emotional difficulties that have existed between you and your counterpart, I feel like that is a big component of what's being left behind or whatever like emotional pain has made it harder for you and your counterpart to show up with one another in vulnerable ways. I feel like that is something that is coming through quite strongly. With the three of wands, I definitely think that like the manifestations that you have when it comes to your own life and with your counterpart, like those are already in the process of occurring. And in fact, that's why you're in such a deep process of regeneration right now. It's it's gearing you up for that. Um, and as comfortable as that process may be, I feel like you're doing a great job of, of being being centered with it and, and moving through it anyway. Um, I feel like what you need to know is, is to just keep going and keep preparing yourself and keep trusting in what your heart's been telling you. And also keep releasing, keep letting go, keep walking away from what doesn't serve you. Like there's major themes in in the readings for all, all of the groups, even though the energies are different, like energies of release, energies of expansion, energies of regeneration. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing to see. Like there's going to be so much growth and so much newness when you move through this process that I feel like you will just be kind of shocked at, you know, what unfolds and, and what your hard work and, and what your willingness to be like with the process of evolution, like you're going to be shocked at where it leads you to. But I feel like what you need to know is like, expect the unexpected um, and expect expect whatever changes you're going through to be more profound than you even anticipated. But let's see how your counterpart is currently experiencing the energies of this connection. So how how is Pile 3's counterpart experiencing their connection, please? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I feel like they they are having this really profound experience of just overwhelming love. Love for the connection, love for you, love for their growth for themselves for just like how things have unfolded like even if things have been chaotic it's like things are coming together for them in a way where they're like okay i understand why i had to go through this now or okay i understand like why this theme was important and i feel like there's just a, a lot of gratitude and maybe even some nostalgia around like maybe like when you first met one another and like the vibes that existed then or just this like their heart is overflowing with gratitude for you and like love and appreciation for you if you've been a very supportive figure in their life or if you've just been very like kind and patient and like supportive of them like there's just so much gratitude there and like your character i think is something that they find to be very rare and very precious and they are just feeling an overwhelming amount of like love and feeling for you now what they do with that i i'm will will remain to be seen but they're having just this like powerful profound shift into love where they're like realizing what love means to them what what is important for them when it comes to love like understanding how love shows up in many different forms and also realizing that like they deserve to embrace who and what they love so i definitely think that there is just a lot of overwhelming love for you for themselves for the connection and for how far it's brought them you may feel like your your counterpart is in a much more stable position than you are and that's okay like you don't have to be the more stable one always and um I feel like your counterpart is really carrying a lot of loving energy for you for themselves for the future and I feel like they're just experiencing like a lot of profound truths of like I can't ignore what's in my heart anymore or I can't I can't neglect my heart anymore or I need I need to like it's not even that they need to do anything it's just that like the amount of love that they feel is just so overwhelming I don't even know if they know what to do about that but it's like a 
they're just sitting in it like they're just basking in it like like a hot tub <laughs> like they're just like they're really like wow and I feel like they have reached a point where they know the truth that's in their heart and I feel like that is is bringing them even more love it's so beautiful I love it ah okay now let's see a good way to connect with your counterpart and the connection at this time so what is a good way for pile three to connect with their counterpart and the connection at this time so the one of the best ways to connect is to work through what is blocking your heart space um this and this is interesting because like asking and asking this question i've gotten in all three groups there were answers about individual action so forgiveness work that still needs to be done uh i think that could be very helpful whether it's related to your person or not um and another thing another way to connect to your counterpart is to stop letting your negative thoughts override what your heart is telling you stop trying to dumb down or numb the experiences that you're having because you're afraid of what it means should you feel deeply I also just feel like any stories you're telling yourself about things not working out or about not being good enough or about rejection, abandonment, like those are things that I think that you need to give yourself love and, and care around and be compassionate towards yourself around. And I feel like looking at those, anything that you can do honestly to just be more heart-centered and be in your heart more, especially when it comes to yourself, when it comes to having compassion for like the, your process of transformation and what that looks like for you like I think that is incredibly important and I think that the universe is really asking you to be more gentle with yourself and like give yourself time and space to be in your heart space so whether that's through meditation or just doing something that makes your heart feel really good because I feel like you're missing out on feeling these loving vibes because you're in your head more than your heart and so if you can really just take the time and just really like just ask to just like breathe and center yourself and, and just consciously try to tune into the connection, not from your, from your mind, but from your heart, I feel like you'll be shocked at like the energy that you feel and like the feelings that come through. It might be quite profound and quite powerful. You might even cry, but I think that's kind of what you need. I feel like you need to connect th to the connection through through connecting to your heart and whatever connection between you and your person already exists I feel like keep that up but also like if you can take action from a place of love rather than a place of fear of rejection or fear of the unknown I feel like that'll be really beneficial for you and your counterpart when you're connecting with each other ah okay so let's go ahead and see now uh how is the connecting energy working with you both at this time? So we kind of answered that already, but to get more specifically, Spirit, how is the connecting energy working with Pile 3 and their counterpart at this time, please? How is... We have the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, can we clarify the Knight of Pentacles, please? Okay. We have the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, beautiful. So the connecting energy is working with you both in ways where things are going to start picking up more quickly. Eight of Wands on the back of the deck. The connecting energy is working with the both of you to help you both get out of existing patterns of behavior that no longer serve, but also helping you get into a, a positive routine and a positive, like, I don't want to say grind set, but like a, a positive, like daily routine and like a, an, a productive way of existing that is beneficial, consistent, grounding, and also that is just, on, on a greater level, this is just the energies acting upon what already exists. So like, I feel like both of you have already been trying to create more space, more connection, more love between the two of you, but it seems like it's always, you know, on the horizon or a ways away. And so I feel like what's really happening is the connection is creating space for opportunities outside of what you think is possible and also creating space to realize that like not everything has to happen according to a specific timing or according to a specific way of doing things. Like 
everything has its own timing and, and you don't have to pressure yourselves to go about things a certain way. Um, like everything is working out and like everything is as it needs to be. And I feel like the connection is working with the both of you to help you refine your routines and let go of impatience around the future because the present is already so beautiful and there's so much here happening and I feel like for you it might be harder to see but I feel like for your person there's a lot of profound shifts happening where they're like they feel so good about the future with you and so good about like what what is to come and I feel like you may be like, I don't even know what is going on for the future because I don't even know what's going on right now. And like, that is fine. Because I feel like a lot of you not knowing what's going on is creating pathways for new opportunities and creating structures for new routines. Like your routine is like the building blocks of the new reality that you're creating. And so I feel like what's really happening here is that this dolphin baby energy is creating expansive timelessness and this, this ability to have space and to go beyond time in ways where you can be creative with your thoughts, creative with how you see your reality so that you can do new things and try things differently and not be bogged down by linear belief systems of like, oh no, I have to do things this way or this isn't effective enough or I don't have time to explore this. Like the energy of the connection is working with you both to feel more open, free and safe to say yes, to say yes to each other, to say yes to life to say yes to whatever maybe wants to come to your world or to say yes to your dreams, to say yes to your desires and say yes to growth and exploration and expansion in ways that you denied yourself in the past, which I think is freaking beautiful. And I love that for you both. So we're gonna go ahead and see now what guidance spirit would like to give you. So, Spirit, what guidance do you have for Pile 3 at this time? Yes! Okay, we have Rodenite with the Heart Chakra. Love is a verb, so make it your most treasured action. So, I definitely think getting into your heart space is one of the best things you can do for yourself and for your connection right now. Um, because your heart space might be stopping you from taking action or from connecting or just doing something that will make you feel good. And there's no reason for that. You can. So we have Snowflake Obsidian with the Root Chakra and it says safety and the hurricane of life, a strong foundation will keep you safe. So yeah, I feel like you're in the process of grounding in powerful ways and I feel like it's good that you're in the ground right now. Like it's good that you're where you're at, like where you're at is where you need to be. And I feel like you just need to trust in this process and trust that like when you come out on the other side, like you will see, oh, nothing was out of place and I was right where I was supposed to be um and that you're safe you and your person are safe like this connection is safe and a solid foundation is literally already being created and as i say that creation comes out of the deck so creation the flames of destruction will ignite a rebirth and so i feel like that's what you're already in the process of and i feel like that's what your person has moved through and like i think that now there's just even more opportunities for life and love to create beautiful things for the both of you for you to create together and yeah I really don't think you have anything to worry about everything everything is smooth sailing you just have to trust your own process and trust how it's moved through you and ex when it comes to your person expect the unexpected that's that's all I can say there but pile three that is where I'm going to leave this reading so thank you guys so 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 much for watching and thank you so much for letting my ads play in the background because that is one of the simplest and easiest ways to show support and appreciation for my channel but if you'd like to support me in other ways you can like this video you can comment down below let me know how it resonates you can subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to click that little notification bell whenever I upload a new reading you can check out my merch you can check out my social media you can check out my candles be sure to use code ASA10 for 10% off you can check out the extended um but yeah, that's all I have for you guys. So thank you so much for watching and for letting me read for you. I really hope it resonated and I hope it helped. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this video. And I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye!